Let's let's bring in Admiral Stravitas. Admiral, I do not ask you to associate with a single word I said. Uh, I, 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 I do. I do, though, want to know how long I believe it is my belief. And if I am wrong, please push back. The damage, the harm that Benjamin Netanyahu is inflicting on Israel, that he has already inflicted on Israel, that he will inflict on Israel for years to come because of his behavior since and before October the 7th seems to me is so massive that we're going to have to leave it to historians and future generations to sum it up. But I'm just wondering, how long does this continue, the hell that we're seeing play out in Israel and Gaza? Let's start with the political. I think that the clock is indeed ticking on Benjamin Netanyahu for all the reasons you articulate. No democracy can tolerate that kind of incompetence on display again and again and again. That clock is ticking. And I think we're gonna hear from the center of Israeli politics, the center left of Israeli politics, and they're going to demand answers appropriately to the questions you just posed. And I would indeed associate myself very strongly with all of that. I'll add that the in the center of that cabinet is former general, leader of the Israeli Defense Forces, uh, Benny Gantz, who is someone I worked with uh, consistently during the four years. I was Supreme Allied Commander in NATO. You're seeing a photograph of him right now. He's steady. He's deeply respected within that society, and he obviously knows the security and the international uh, aspects of all of this. He gets it on how this is damaging Israel in the longer term. And uh, Joe, you laid out very well all of the internal dynamics and questions. I'll give you a couple on the international scene, starting with uh, a, a tormented, uh, obviously heartbroken leader in Jose Andres, uh, with whom I have worked on a number of different things in my capacity as chairman of the board of the Rockefeller Foundation. He's passionate, emotional, and appropriately furious uh, at the idea that this uh, attack on his forces could be called an accident. Um, it was a deliberate shot. It was taken with bad intelligence, obviously. Uh, but uh, I'll close with this. We absolutely need complete clarity, transparency on the upcoming investigation. And no, it can't wait until after hostilities stop, probably months from now. It's got to happen now. Admiral, let me ask you about that attack on the World Central Kitchen convoy. There is no good answer here. On the one hand, Chef Andres is suggesting they were targeted, yeah, yeah. which, my God, if, if no. that's the case. And, and on the other hand, it's <clears throat> the intelligence was so bad, our drones, our headquarters couldn't see that there was a World Central Kitchen logo on the top of these vans, which, yeah. as Chef Andres has said and many others have said, they coordinate, coordinated their movements with the IDF, knowing how dangerous it was in that zone. Which of those doors are you looking behind? Neither of them are good. Yeah, neither are. And, and let me take you inside the targeteering room, because I assure you at the IDF headquarters, um, they have a special cell that is put together. It'll have intelligence officers. It'll have a judge advocate general to be considering questions. It'll have typically a red cell individual who will be uh, skeptical of the operation. And above all, it'll have the actual targeteers, the uh, operators who have flown those kind of missions. Now they're on the ground side of it. That team is going to be looking at every time uh, Israel releases a precision guided weapon. So uh, where that failure occurred, was it intelligence? Was it a judgment call? Was it technology? Uh, was it uh, a drone circuit that failed to send prompt and accurate information? It could be any of those things. I can uh, certainly attest to the fact that Israeli defense forces are not going to uh, deliberately target 
uh, humanitarian workers. That's not in their DNA. Uh, on the other hand, this is a massive military failure. It has to be pulled apart. Um, the source of the problem is somewhere in that targeteering center. Does it make sense to you, though, Admiral, that the idea of can throw a dart into Tehran, into Iran, and take out a leader or wherever that leader is, yeah. outside of Iran, actually? Um, and this was in Syria in this case. But make this kind of mistake, that's what just doesn't add up for people. Yeah, and if you think about war, there's always two faces to war. And on the same day, as you said, Willie, there's a highly precise strike on an embassy compound of Tehran that's located in Syria. Yet, literally within hours, we have this tragic, tragic event where these humanitarian aid workers are killed. In both cases, here's the point to be made, in both cases, the precision guided weapons did what the makers designed them to do in that they did strike with extreme precision. In one case, the intelligence was good, the judgment was good, the visual technology worked. In the other, something went wrong. And we need to understand that. And oh, by the way, there needs to be significant accountability. I can assure you if that had been a U.S. missile taking out seven aid workers, um, that chain of accountability would rise way above the sergeant, the Air Force captain, the colonel targeteer. It would go up to the one star, the two star, the three star. Um, that kind of accountability has to follow as well, and all that has to be done transparently. It needs to be done transparently. It needs to be done also with the understanding that when Israel wanted to kill an Iranian leader in, in Syria, they were able to do it. Um, and so they were precise there, not so precise with aid trucks. No, they really didn't want in there. They have been fighting. Uh, Netanyahu is fighting to keep aid trucks out of there. I agree with you, uh, Admiral. Um, I agree with you that uh, they're not going to deliberately target those trucks. That said, uh, I would certainly look at a lot of explanations uh, with, 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 with very, very skeptical, through very skeptical lens. Admiral, <clears throat> let's stipulate that war, something you know, is a tragic, lethal, messy business. Given that stipulation, why does it seem that Israeli, the Israeli Defense Forces, the IDF, has such a high tolerance for civilian casualties, for collateral damage, much more so than any other army? It's a complicated question, but I'll, I'll give you three thoughts on it. Number one, it is the the raw emotion of failure on their own part. And what I mean by that is, as Joe said a moment ago, they, they saw these images of Israeli babies shot in their cribs. That will engender immense emotion and fury in, in any military person, frankly, in any human being. So that's a predicate to what's happening in front of us. Number two is they live in the toughest neighborhood. They're up against foes who are like Hamas, rapists, mutilators, torturers. Um, there is a component to their reaction that faces the fact of the, the, the horrible aspects of those with whom they fight. You should never give in to that as a military professional. You should never give in to either of those emotions, but it is certainly part of the calculus. And then third and finally, uh, and I don't mean this in any way to sound like an excuse for what's happening, but you just can't think of a worse military situation than 2.2 million innocent civilians, half of them children, caught in the crossfire. It's just an incredibly complex situation. So um, none of those are excuses. The IDF has got to up its game in taking care of that civilian population. And I'll conclude with this. Um, it, Caddy mentioned Rafa a moment ago. There are a million Gazans in Rafa. The IDF cannot launch attacks into Rafa without securing the food, the medicine, the shelter, for those million people. And 
far preferably actually move them out of Rafa before they conduct military attacks. That's the point at which the IDF needs to overcome the emotions we talked about a moment ago, Mike. If they do not do that, I think uh, these taps of, of weapons, notably offensive weapons, are going to start shutting down from the West. 